What is language? There are many different languages, English, Mandarin, and Arabic, to name a few. What do these have in common? They're all the collective products of various civilizations and systems to relate clusters of symbolic meaning and truthfully and usefully, key, describe the world around them, parameterized according to the utility of their language users. This paradigm is why, for example, the Eskimos have 50 different words for snow, while in English we only have one. It's not helpful for us to draw these fine distinctions. Chris Langan says, quote, natural languages evolve naturally in real world communities of language users, often in coupling with their cultures and conventions. And yet, more interesting than the differences among languages are their similarities. I've taken Spanish and Hebrew in school, and my first language is English, of course. Despite having little evolutionary contact linguistically since the Proto Indo European tongue, these languages are like, 80% the same. And this is because they all describe the same reality with the same standard linguistic structure and processing, which has an endomorphic mirror in the human mind through which they can make common contact. Language equals mind equals reality. As we discussed in our video on an introduction to mathematical metaphysics, reality as a whole can with unlimited precision be characterized as a metalinguistic meta object. It is a meta language by all definitions of the word meta. It is beyond language in the sense that it goes beyond any particular human language in its scope and power and self-referential slash higher order in the sense that it not only describes reality, but creates and instantiates the reality it describes. Reality's logical slash linguistic and geometric aspects are self-dual to one another. By the former, the universe has internal coherence and functional meaning. By the latter, it has physical extension and tangible reality. It is thus called a self-configuring, self self-processing language, SCSPL, because it processes and configures the universe, which instantiates and parses it. Even though all human languages are VLANs of the SCSPL language model universe, the symbol for universe until Langen had been omitted from the formal definition of natural language, written out L equals, si equals sigma... Written out sigma, L equals sigma, gamma, S sigma, meaning L, language, consists of sigma, a finite alphabet of letters which combine to form words and expressions, gamma, which is the grammar which determines which combinations of letters, words, phrases, etc. are included in a language, and S sigma, the surface structure of the language, the set of strings which, which, uh, which gamma determines. According to Langen, the dualism between language and the universe in this natural language definition is unacceptable. Look at these closed parentheses walling off any linguistic content between the formal language and its model universe. According, the, the universe has a syntax. A, this is an actual a fundamental property of reality. The universe has a syntax by which it recognizes and identifies itself. It is self-memorizing, self-perceiving, and self-learning. How could it do this? except by way of a language that faithfully mirrors the structure of human language. Humans are microcosms of the universe, and our minds provide syntactic information which can be recognized and processed by the universe, taking our minds as tellers and syntactors for the universal mind, the mind of God. Chris Langdon thus writes in his 2018 paper, The Metaformal System, Completing the Theory of Language, the capacity of language to accurately represent the external universe is far too reliable and extensive for this unequivocal kind of dualism to hold. It is not that we are always successful in predicting factual observations from language alone. Rather, it is the very possibility of bringing language into conformance with reality and vice versa that dualism cannot explain. If dualism were justified and language and reality were truly separate and independent, then there would be no basis for bringing them together, and neither science nor any other form of human experience would be possible. The above definition L equals L equals sigma gamma S sigma is therefore misleading in the way that its parentheses, again, like impermeable walls, isolate human cognitive language from the universe it so effectively but improbably represents. The question the CTMU meta language answers is the unreasonable effectiveness of natural language in reality at large, which is a generalization of the unreasonable effectiveness of mathematics in the physical sciences, and which is a, a philosophical question of how does mathematics connect 
to to physics and why do why is this mathematical structure show up in our universe but even more generally why can we describe the universe using language where does that correspondence reside precisely why do our descriptions of reality correspond to objective properties thereof langan continues quote where any degree of intelligibility is given structure must already be shared between mind and external reality mind must be equipped with a cognitive identity language l through which you can be recognized in a complementary way you must have the capacity to display content recognizable to l dualistic language theory excludes everything that makes language telic or dynamic language is taking a start symbol the abstract concept to be expressed relating clusters of symbolic meaning as slash excitations of the language's base syntax and using that to construct a sentence that faithfully mirrors its start symbol suppose we generalize this to the intrinsic language of the universe in that case it means that the objects and physical relations in the universe can be understood as terminal excitations of the non-terminal infinite expansive domain transforming the essentially linguistic substrate of the deep reality telesis the ultimate stuff of reality in the ctmu into a reality self simulation where secondary images of the scspl so where where linguistic processors were sy syntactically operating on the global reality language so where sensor controllers slash secondary tellers so you know human beings other intelligent life forms etc can interface with the scl spl universe and derive meaning and value from it at the level of reality language functions as an identity the identity of a universe chris langan says that he would explain the ctmu to a child as follows well every part of the world talks to itself and to other parts and the ctmu is the language that it uses right now i'm using the language called english to talk to you and tell you what i mean you can understand me because you understand english the same way i do when the world the cosmos the universe whatever talks to itself it uses the ctmu scspl is the identity of reality meaning reality can be described as a language the scspl that talks to itself about itself for its own purposes the universe is not fundamentally composed of point particles or objects but instead self-dual linguistic and physical objects called syntactic operators which can transform the scspl to instantiate a physical object or process thus the entire syntax of reality is contained in every local identity it let every local entity which is why reality is intelligible to itself and mutually intelligible among its several parts syntactic operators transform the syntax of the reality language according to the global and agentive volition of tellers which langan describes as structurally complex syntactors which can factorize telesis or actualize ontic potential and have sufficient complexity to consciously generate internal representations of themselves and their relationships with the external environment there are two strata of tellers the global operator descriptor god of the scspl reality self simulation a constructive creative intelligence whose ability and power we are unable to circumscribe from within his creation called the mind of god colloquially and secondary images of the god namely observer participants in the reality self simulation such as human beings and other complex life forms which may arise in the history of the cosmos the metaformal system could be can be reduced to a master equation which briefly describes the meta mathematical structure of the universe m equals l int equals ls wall l o equals sigma equals n t gamma mu s s sigma i'm, I'm need to brush up on my latin the um m is a meta language or equivalently the meta linguistic or metaphysical identity of reality which is equal to l int an intrinsic language through which the universe exists and evolves scspl and reality are two ways of referring to the same thing reality is a recursive self-calling language that is fractal and natural and reflective of the structure of heaven and earth at all levels l int breaks down into two semi languages ls and lo ls is the intention of scspl the internal content of the conspansive manifold a meta mathematical structure that represents the fundamental nature of reality as it evolves the teleodynamics of this manifold determines how the universe evolves 
LO, it's a logical complement, the linear ectomorphic semi-model, the extension of SCSPL, namely its instantiation in a real objective universe studied by physics consisting of physical objects and relations whose trajectories are locally external to themselves. They're ectomorphic. And so M equals, and the, the last part, M equals sigma equals NT equal, equals MT gamma MU S sigma it's very close to how we define a natural language. What can we, so we can, we can go back and we can see that is actually very, very close to the definition of a natural language, which was sigma, gamma, S sigma. So, well, and so what can we say about the SDSPL metaformal system language, the M, the identity of reality, instead of using letters to concatenate strings of symbols. It uses tellers and syntactors to provide linguistic and metaphysical information through which it can form intelligible sequences of states. Its alphabet is NT, representing tellers and syntactors. There are two levels of tellers, the primary teller, the GOD, and secondary tellers, observer participants like humans, and three levels of syntactors. Primary and secondary syntactors are also tellers, but so that's the GOD and observer participants, but tertiary syntactors, like syntactic operators, are not, because they have no volition or creative power except by instantiating the teleology of tellers. M evolves by identifying itself with the structure of its secondary images and thereby refining and strengthening its identity. The purpose of the reality self-simulation consisting of tertiary syntactors is to have a playground, so to speak, whereby the GOD's secondary images can exist and evolve with one another and freely choose to instantiate the teleology of the GOD, or M. M's grammar, the mu-morphic grammar, gamma, mu, gamma mu, which attaches God to his secondary images and is the grammar which determines slash generates the evolution of reality from one state to next. Its subscript is MU, standing for multiplex unity, which means many places is the same. Every Everywhere, every point in space and time is the same distributed syntax and form. And so, because it's, and that and it has that same syntax and form because it's state transition syntax, the rules and structures by which reality evolves is it, contained in that grammar. It's consistent and it's embedded in every object in the universe, determining the evolution of the SCSPL reality self-simulation. It's the principle of consistency which binds everything in the universe together. And so the surface structure of the string is concatenated by the metaformal system is S sigma, sigma, which is the equivalent of the actual sentences formed in a language as opposed to the deep structure of the grammar, the syntax and composition in the case of S, but in the case of SCSPL, what S uh, sigma is, it represents the tangible universe, what we can actually see and feel and touch as opposed to this deep structure, which is unseen and intangible. So cosmologist Max Tegmark once prophesized that all the equations describe a, me oh, here's a little meme I made, um, once prophesied that all, all the equations describe a master theory that could explain all of space-time and its mathematical structure could break into finite descriptions short enough to fit on a t-shirt. The following item of apparel summarizes the logical mathematical structure of the CTMU in three lines. Let's try it. Part 1, M equals LMUM, generically couple language and universe into an ontic identity, which contains its own universe and into an ontic identity, which, gener which contains its own universe and identity language, M equals LMUM, equating the global property or intention of reality with LM, the physical universe, UM or extension of reality. And so part two, uh, M equals LN equals LSLO equals sigma equals NT, ga gamma MU as sigma, formally identify, and, and I have all these here too. This is kind of cool. Um, formally identify and define the metaformal system, uh, M equals L and equals LS, LSLO equals sigma equals NT gamma MU S sigma. This equation says that there's one ultimate identity of reality, which factorizes into two strata of tellers that the universe evolves through an intrinsic language to generate its surface structure. That this same grammar connects the GOD to its secondary images allowing reality to exist and develop in a reality self-simulation with two complementary semi-models, and that the purpose of this SCSPL reality self-simulation is the self-identification of M, 
the metaformal system, thus generically equating M with the actual universe and its existence and evolution. And part three, reality int equals reality X. The intention of reality is the same as the extension of reality. So the quoting Chris Langan, this brings the entire CTMU metaformal system to rest on a single closure meta axiom, the analytic reality closure principle, ARC, which is also called the CTMU identification or intelligibility axiom. It can be expressed as a logical generalization of Einstein's equation with a medium on one side and its content on the other. Reality int equals reality x. The equal sign is the same as the mu morphism, which attaches God to his creation and secondary images. Reality is intention, meaning its generic identity as the ground and source of all being is a descriptor. Its, ext its extension, the SCSPL universe, LO, is an operator. It, thus defining the, go G the GOD as a coupling of the two, a global operator descriptor has both the intention and extension of reality in a single self-dual simple substance. And so all three equations are, G are GOD equations, so to speak, equations referring to and describing and operating on the global operator descriptor because they are metaformal systems of the global metaformal definitions of the global operator descriptor, the identity of reality. And so we can also say on the left is content and on the right, as we said, and on the right is medium. And so this is, or energy and mass. So this is how we can eventually, we'll go over this in the future of how we can approach a CTMU theory of general relativity that actually extends that to include the metaphysical structure of reality. And the ARC can also be formulated as a logical super tautology, the same way the CTMU as a whole is formulated. Or as I mentioned in my video on divine simplicity, a generalization of God's name, he tells Moses in the book of Exodus, Eya Asher Eya, I am that I am. This is the same thing that's saying reality int equals reality x. Eya is derived from the Hebrew verb hayo, which means to be. The text repeats the word that denotes existence as an attribute. Asher is an incomplete noun that another noun must complete, so it's a subject of the predicate. The phrase means that the object described and the attribute by which we describe him are the same in God. So when applied to theology, the ARC expresses the structure of God's being, like God's intention, his identity, and extension, his creation, are syntactically equivalent up to isomorphism. And so this is also an expression of CTMU, hological panentheism. God exists in everything, and everything exists in God, but God extends beyond the universe, beyond his creation, into this total and complete intentional identity. And so the ARC is the first and most fundamental principle of the CTMU because it means that any predicate ascribed to God is a synonym for the fullness of his being. So you cannot have a complex God with various faculties and parts, but rather the simple undivided substance of the ground and source of all being, with every aspect is a synonym for the fullness of his being and the fullness of being, period. The ARC is the most powerful and general tautology, roughly equivalent to the statement, existence exists, logically speaking, absolutely unbreakable, yet deceptively powerful. The medium content relation can also be reformulated in terms of the CTMU of reality principle. Reality contains all and only that which is real, i.e. its medium contains no content not internally recognizable to itself. Anyway, pretty nifty t-shirt, I um, right? I might... I might sell some, probably, probably not. But the and when when there's a flood, you will need an ARC. You will need an ark. So let the light shine forth in the darkness. May the peace of our Father in heaven be upon you. Like and subscribe. Peace.